Well, now, I want to uh, discuss more the changes to exams in England this academic year. Pupils are to be given, we hear, advance notice of some exam topics and their answers will be marked more leniently in some cases to try to make sure that students don't suffer from missing school or other disadvantages caused by remote learning because of the pandemic and the lockdown. To talk more about what should be done, I'm joined now by Lord Kenneth Baker, who was Education Secretary when GCSEs were introduced, and Evelyn Ford, who's head teacher at Coptall Comprehensive School in North London and has just been awarded, by the way, Head Teacher of the Year by the Times Educational Supplement. Congratulations, Evelyn Ford. Let's start, let, <laughs> and coming from Lord Baker as well. Um, let's start with you then, Evelyn, because, uh, you know, we're at... Uh, you're at the uh, coal face, what used to be called the chalk face, I suppose, back in the day. And, and does this sound like some sensible compromises, some sensible solutions overall? Yeah, I, I, you know, I think it does. I think, you know, my personal preference would have been for England to have followed Scotland and Wales in announcing their decision to cancel exams. You know, young people who are already highly anxious and highly stressed, the wait has not been great, but, you know, we are where we are, um, and at least we now have some idea about what that summer, um, the summer package will look like. Well, Lord Baker, same question to you then. Sensible, or as Evelyn Ford is saying there, perhaps better to have cancelled the exams again altogether? Well, the government is now determined to have the exams come what they are. I'm not in favour of that at all. But if you're going to do that, then you certainly have to lower the standards of the exams. You have to make them easier to take. And that's what they've done. But I'm worried about the students who have very poor education. Do you know that on November the 26th this year, just last week, 789,000 children weren't at school on one day? Mm. 789,000 because of COVID. That's, and so the attendance is only 80%. Now, they've all lost a number of days of teaching. It'll happen again in next week and the following week and, and after Christmas it'll be worse because there'll be a rise because of the mixtures of because of the family gatherings in, 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 on Christmas Day. And that means that students will lose an enormous amount of teaching. They'll all be different. One student might lose five days, another new student may, might lose 10 days, 40 days. The head is agreeing with me. Now, in that case, then the only teacher who knows how much education they've lost is the school teacher. And the school teacher should be allowed to vary the grades to take into account the lost education of the children. Now, I, I don't think that's going to happen. And that's the only way that this whole system can be justified, in my view. Well, Otherwise, well we're, first, we're privileged to have uh, Evelyn Ford here to give us some, some, some personal experience, some context to those overall figures quoted by Lord Baker, the large numbers of students who've been missing school because of varying degrees of, of lockdown, because of self-isolation, because of year groups being sent home. What has been the experience on that at Cop Talk? Yeah, it's, it's, I echo exactly what has just been said. You know, at Cocktail, the challenge is, is, is immense. We have not only students in and out, we also have staff in and out. Um, and the challenge for teachers on the ground is, is significant. And yes, there are huge numbers of young people up and down the country who, are, who will be impacted by, you know, by the pandemic. And, you know, particularly our young people, you know, from disadvantaged backgrounds, you know, the, the challenges that they are immense. So every day is a real challenge for school and college leaders. I don't disagree at all. However, I, you know, I do feel as if, you know, the, the government, they're not going to back down. We are where we are. So what I think we would be looking for is we really want the granular details as soon as possible. You know, they have said that students can take aids like formulas into the exam. But, you know, we would really need to know as soon as possible what does that actually mean for us. So the more information we can get as soon as possible would really help us. And uh, just staying with you, I Evelyn Ford, I just, want to get a, I just want to get a sense, though, of the, the inequalities that have happened because of COVID-19. Have you had, within year groups, perhaps one class, one cohort, spending more time at home, having to self-isolate than others, and, and then those unfairnesses building through no fault of their own? 
a hundred percent derma you know i've had a whole year group out for two weeks we've done remote learning teachers have worked exceptionally hard to try and you know bridge the gap and you know help them catch up even more you know i call it playing whack-a-mole at times you know you have one year group in and then you've got another year group out um, it is every, every day is an immense challenge. Those figures that have just been quoted, I don't disagree with at all. Yeah, and, and so, sorry I interrupted you there, Lord Baker. It seems to me as if, um, you know, we're a long way away from uh, let's hope this vaccine having a real effect. There's a long way of the academic year still to run. There are going to be many, many more, as you've described to us there, many, many more students missing school. I mean, is this... Is this over or do you think um, the campaign to get the exams cancelled altogether should continue? I don't think it's over at all because there's injustice here. It's grossly unfair that a child in the headmistress of school, she'd actually prefer to have teacher assessment and so would I rather than exam. But it's grossly unfair that a child in her school, let us say, has lost 40 hours in chemistry and then another pupil in her school has only lost one hour in chemistry. How can they possibly be treated fairly by being submitted to the same grade. It is not important. It's just totally impossible. It's unfair. And it's the disadvantaged children which will suffer most. It's not the cleverest children. It is always the disadvantaged children. And I think when this becomes clearer in the course of the next year, I think the government will have to think again. They have actually set up a committee of experts to look into this, and let's see what they come up with. But at the moment, it would be grossly unfair for a student who, for no fault of their own, hasn't been taught for 10, 20 or 30 days to be judged as if they had. The whole basis of any examination system is that all the students have a standard measure of, of attendance. It, it's like a race. You can't have a race with some starting 50 yards in front of another or 100 yards in front of another. What happens to the person who's at the back and the person at the back who's going to be treated unfairly? And that's what the position is. And Evelyn Ford, let's so talk more about very those. Much hope. Okay. Um, Think again and trust the teachers, trust the head teacher like you've just heard and her teachers to make the assessment of the children. Well, that, that, that that, that's what, that's what I want to ask uh, Evelyn Ford about, um, the, the teachers. I mean, as you've described the teachers, and I'm sure your teachers and so many thousands of others up and down the United Kingdom making every effort when their students have to spend time at home, making every effort to get learning to them. But let's talk about disadvantaged students. Quite a few of them oh. don't have access to the internet, don't have access to those laptops that they need to access that learning, or indeed don't have parents and carers who are going to make them sit in front of them and do the work. Yeah, it's it's an immense challenge, and the laptops that were promised kind of never really came. Um, so schools have had to use their own, you know, their own budgets to really try and get, you know, the technology to our young people. So in terms of the disadvantage, you know, the gap, I, you know, I'm I fear is just going to widen even more. And you know, I wouldn't, you know, I would talk about the disadvantage, but I would also talk about, you know, the mental health and well-being of our young people. So, you know, yes. they are equally yes. double impacted by, you know, the school closure and the stress that, they're not, that they now find themselves under. So, you know, schools are going through, you know, immense challenge. But what I will say is that I think the profession, you know, we've risen to the challenge. You know, we, not only have we been delivering meals, we've been delivering Kindles, we've been delivering laptops, you know, working really, really hard to make sure that no child is left behind. But it's not easy. Yeah. It's, a, it's a challenge. So good to hear it. And Lord Baker, can, can I, I ask say... you... Can I, no, can I just ask you a direct question, Lord Baker, as a former Education Secretary? Do you think the current incumbent is up to the job? I mean, that Farago last time round of the, uh, of the assessments, the cancelling or not cancelling the exams, and it seems here we go again. Well, I'm not going to criticise one of my predecessors. It's not really fair. Uh, but I would say that I'm mainly concerned about the mental health of children next July, because sitting in a written exam for many disadvantaged children will increase their, their tension, their anxiety, their concern. When they don't have to do it, their performance is best assessed by their teachers, by the head teacher you've just seen and her teacher. I trust her judgment and the judgment of her teachers, quite frankly, rather than putting all that anxiety on the children. And when they go to sit an exam, a whole term's 
learning is lost because all they do is revise, 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 and revise for four or five weeks before an exam. What they've got to do, they've got to catch up on all the education they've lost since the last year. They've all lost four months in the summer and they're now losing more in a really unfair way. Okay. And at the day, exam systems have got to be fair or they're valueless. And I okay. don't see how they can be fair. They don't take into account the amount of education and teaching a child has lost. OK. I'm sorry we are out of time. Lord Baker, thank you so much. Head Teacher of the Year, I want to say that again. Evelyn Ford, really good talking to you. Thank you so much indeed for sparing the time. You must be so, so busy. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.